Usually when I bring up bad weapons, or bottom tiers, or low tiers, or any of the sort, it generally does not give you the best reception and a good amount of negative comments. So anyway, it's time to do an entire video on them. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what bad weapons in Splatoon actually are, and I want to talk about what makes these bad weapons bad, what you could do about them, and really get the record straight, because I think most people don't really understand what bad weapons are in this game. Also, as a quick disclaimer, this video isn't to say don't play any of the weapons I talk about here. I play some of the weapons we're gonna talk about today, and there's nothing wrong with playing a bad weapon. So that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing as it helps me out quite a lot, and let's get started with a traditionally bad, well in this case, character. I think when a lot of people hear bad, they think of something akin to bad characters in Melee. Like, Bowser's bad because, yeah, his grab doesn't work, for example, or he has a ton of extreme crazy weaknesses and next to no actual strengths. And to be fair, this is the way a lot of video games work, because there weren't patches and people weren't really great at balancing games, but a lot of them have moved past this era and Splatoon is one of them. There is no weapon in Splatoon even remotely close to what Bowser is in Melee. And Similarly, nothing in Splatoon 2 is as close to what Melee Fox is. The balance of Splatoon is pretty good, and viability is pretty high, so what gets judged as good or bad is a little bit different. This is why I have a problem with arguments like, this weapon isn't bad, it can do these things. Because, yeah, that's right, but that's also true for literally every single weapon. We do not have bad options in this game that literally have nothing they can do well. Every weapon excels at something in this game. So weapons that are bad are a little bit more complicated, and generally there are two fields that they fall into. One of them being weapons with their own unique strengths, but maybe drastic weaknesses or opportunities that don't let them shine as much. These are more complicated, and we'll get into some specific examples in a bit. The more straightforward example, and the worst one to be, is just straight up outclassed. There are very few cases of these, but there's one clear as day example, which is Custom Gootuber. Gootuber is actually pretty solid solid stat-wise. It has tap shot paint that's really solid. It has a cool kit with curling bomb and inkjet for aggressive potential. Its charge hold allows it to get some mobility that it absolutely needs for its range, and the main power-up effect on it is also pretty strong. This weapon absolutely has things it can do. It is not a traditionally bad weapon. It has a number of strengths, and that's what I'm trying to point out. However, like I mentioned before, Gootuber's problem is being straight up outclassed by Squiffer. Gootuber has a charge hold, but Squiffer can charge full speed in the air, giving it mobility all the time, and is much more reliable and less gimmicky. Squiffer can paint well with tap shots and with full charges, and MPU only enhances that. And the nail in the coffin is that even the kit is just a better version of Gootubers, with Suction Bomb being the more versatile and just overall better bomb than Curling. If Rush Squiffer didn't exist, I would argue that Gootuber would actually be a pretty solid mid-tier or maybe even better, but because Fresh Squiffer exists, why the hell would you ever play Gootuber over it? To exemplify this point, the footage that you're seeing in the background is Chocopero, a great Japanese player in a random Japanese tournament, winning with the weapon. It's not a major result or anything, but it just goes to show that the weapon does have strengths that it can be played to in the hands of good players. It's just not played because there's no reason to when compared to other options. That is the unfortunate fate and truth about Gootuber. That's why it's actually bad, and that's the first type of bad weapons, what you never want something to fall into, and if your weapon does fall into this, it either got unbelievably unlucky with its kits, the main weapon needs a rework, or in Gootuber's case, both. Alright, so the next type of bad weapons, ones with actual unique strengths, are a lot harder to talk about, and I'm gonna go through three examples. Vanilla Range Blaster, Vanilla Undercover Brella, and Vanilla Glugadooly. Let's start with something all three of these weapons have in common, which is unique and valuable strengths. Glugadooly has access to a long range and incredibly fast two-shot kill time, along with dodge rolls to be able to move into position for those kills. Range Blaster has good mid-range area denial and an incredibly threatening one-shot direct for its range. And finally, Finally, Undercover Brella has the most unique shield in the game, with its ability to fire while holding it and not having a set time before it's launched, which gives it a lot of versatility and options that other weapons simply don't have. What makes these weapons bad is that they don't have the tools to reliably play to their strengths, meaning their weaknesses are too exploitable to be reliable. Range Blaster is a really good example of this. It absolutely wins some matchups, is great at controlling space, and is really threatening. However, when you stack on specials that completely prevent directs from being even remotely threatened, 
threatening a lack of map control and an inability of tools from the range blasters kit to be able to make up for those weaknesses, then it means there are some comps and strategies that range simply can't deal with effectively. The counterplay against it is so strong in situations so common that its strengths are no longer worth it and it can't play to those at all. FLC says it best with you don't understand. As long as you just avoid extremely common situation, it's busted. No matter how good of a player you are, you will be put in some situations that are unavoidable. And if your weapon can't deal with those situations effectively, then that makes it weak. But now I think a question a lot of people are going to be asking is, can these bad weapons still do well? And that's a bit of a harder topic to answer. Part of what makes Splatoon, and especially Splatoon 2, such a fascinating game is you can build a lot of different comps. And in many cases, if you really want to play around this weaker weapon, you can build a comp around making up for that weapon's weaknesses. There's not too many examples of higher level comps built around traditionally weak weapons. However, a good example I can pull up is Cherry Limeade. In fact, they both use Vanilla Gluga and Vanilla Undercover Brella that I mentioned previously. Ideally, what these teams try to do is run a comp to enable that weapon's strengths as much as possible or mitigate its weaknesses. So for example, Gluga Dooley doesn't have a lot of poking power on defense. It lacks a bomb. So they'll run something like a junior in its comps that can basically have two bombs to make up for the lack of one. You would also want these weapons to enhance the strengths of the weapon you're trying to play around. Using the same example, junior's high armor output is really useful for Gluga since it's incredibly vulnerable while attacking and additionally helps out its inkjet a lot with a 170p charge. Finally, as a team, they try to take advantage of the main weapon's strengths as much as possible. For example, Undercover Brella has one of the fastest splashdown charges in the game, and while it's normally a very vulnerable special, it does exceed at being able to break things like Bomb Rushes or Bubble Blower. So the team could take advantage of that by trying to force those specials early, get rid of them with Splashdown, and take a fight with an advantage. Basically, like how the other team could run options to completely invalidate these weaker weapons by exploiting them, you can also run comps to try to make up for those weaknesses and push those strengths even further. Now, of course, a lot of this is theory crafting and doesn't come with a lot of top-level results to back it up. But the evidence is somewhat there that these weapons can still perform, and I'd say teams like Cherry Limeade are only getting better at it as time goes on. So I want to wrap this up with an opinion. I think some of the weaker weapons of Splatoon 2 are also some of the more fun ones in the game, and I totally understand why a lot of people play them even if they struggle, myself included. While Splatoon 2 is far from a perfect game, I think its balance is one of the best strengths. Even the weaker weapons of the game can probably work out given the right time, team comp, and enough synergy. It's hard to say if that's something we'll really see before Splatoon 3 comes out, but who knows? Either way, I hope this video goes to show that bad weapons aren't that bad, and they aren't the same as traditionally bad weapons. Let me know what you guys think, and what bad weapons you like to play, and I'll see you all in another video.